If you don't know how to open a beer using a lighter, I'll teach you right now. Think of it as a seesaw where your finger is the pivot point. And what you'll do is you'll curve it around and then you can pop the top and the fun just won't stop. Thank you, giving. Hi, I'm comedian and pilgrim TJ Miller. Hi, I'm not comedian and not pilgrim Andy Windack. He's my private chef and I'm your private gourmand. We're here to make deep fried beer braised turkey balls. Deep fried beer braised turkey balls. The ingredients we're gonna to use today are turkey because this is Thanksgiving after all. We're going to use some lovely vegetables, some lovely garlic, parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme, salt and pepper, beer, also chickpea flour, cornmeal, a lovely turkey jus, some eggs, and some spices. The most important ingredient for Thanksgiving dinner is a friend. All right, let's make it. Step one. Step one. You've got one. turkey. Raw, beautiful turkey. You want to salt it, you want to pepper it. <gasps> this is one of Andy's secrets, duck fat. Duck fat. Wear a pilgrim hat, go to the store, get your duck fat. But okay, so look how gross that is. That's yeah, actual gross. fat. And yeah, you throw this in a pot and fry it up and smoke a little pot and get fried. Sometimes if your grandmother comes around the corner really quickly, she thinks you're doing something dirty, and then she realizes you're just cooking. And you go, Grandma, shame on you. Shame on you. Get your mind out of the gutter, and get your heart in the stars. Searing the meat, it adds this level of flavor, this depth of flavor. This smells like heaven. This is actually a lot, but TJ many, has a big How many big people appetite. with this? Serve, do you think? Um, well, this is one breast and a leg and a thigh. It's gonna make quite a lot of balls. Make just enough for me. There we go. Now we're gonna add our vegetables. Slowly, when you're gonna enter the vegetables into the duck fat, so you start slow. You don't want to get a lot of splash back. This is celery, onion, and carrots. You sort of start like this, and then kind of take it and throw it out. No! Just got all of you in the pot. Everyone in the pot. You're gonna take this seared turkey. It's still very raw in the inside. Don't eat it. Don't eat it. Sometimes I eat it. Look at that. All right, we got the turkey back in, so now we need beer. Ah, you're telling me. It's a seesaw. The pouring technique I like to use is a crisscross waterfall that ends with a full rainbow flourish. This is gonna get covered up, but first, we're gonna add two more things, my garlic, and my parsley, sage, rosemary, thyme. So you just put the garlic in? Put the garlic in. There it is. Beautiful. And then this just goes atop it? Yeah, we don't need all of it though. So this is going to get covered and we're going to cook it very low for about three to four hours. I like to put this in the oven on the lowest temperature, which is on my oven, 240 degrees. Hey, we're back. We were at the bar. Yeah. Um, and then we passed out under the table for a few hours. But somehow, the turkey's done. It's cool and it's on a plate, all beautiful. Pilgrim pointers. We keep the bones in because it gives it a lot of flavor, but we're gonna take them out so we don't choke on them. Turkeys have these weird like tendons and other shit in the leg. But if you're a street fighter, um, this is a very good weapon. You can put it right here. And you're gonna go, you either go for the eyes or you sort of slap across the chin like that, and it tickles them and they, they're rendered defenseless, and then you go in for the kill and eat their skin. We don't want this to be totally shredded to nothing, mm -mm. but if we can cut it into like little cubes type things. Get into it. So I'm gonna get a bowl. <laughs> oh, okay. So, usually when making these turkey balls, I'm gonna use about one egg for every six ounces of turkey meat. I can judge it by hand. Yeah. You, you tell me about how much you think that is. This is like that contest at the fair. Guess how much turkey meat. This is about six ounces. All right, well, let's just do some more. Why not? Oh, I see. Um, also, I have a little bit of the jus from making the turkey. Look at that. It's beer. It's got lots of duck fat in there. This will just make sure everything's nice and juicy and uh, put some flavor back in there. It's a Native American technique. Yeah, get in there, mix it up with your hands. Eggs. Yay! Woot. Put a little bit of salt in here. 
Maybe some pepper too. Yeah! Got my friends, parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. Two of them are friends, one's more of an acquaintance. This is a good time to sort of get out any aggression you have about the family members that are, you know, coming and, and are probably gonna create uncomfortable situations. Picture the person that you're upset with and then just machine gunner, you know what I mean? Deborah! Oh, look at that, look at that. I'll just put that in there. So I'm gonna pour the egg, and I do a, a circular pour, and I finish with a, uh, an echo flourish. Hello! So we're gonna get a little tactile again, mix this up so it's well incorporated. And today I'm using chickpea flour. You could use all-purpose flour, but chickpea flour I find actually gets a little bit crispier when you fry it up. And for your friends who say, boo-hoo, I can't eat gluten, chickpea flour is actually an excellent alternative. Eat and gluten until you're booting. We're gonna do our three-step battering system. Sort of like making fried chicken. Bowl one, we're gonna have our chickpea flour. Uh, the second bowl, we're gonna put egg in, and the third bowl, I'm gonna put a mixture of cornmeal and chickpea flour. So the cornmeal just adds a little more crunch and fun texture. Chickpea flour number two. All right, go for it. And a little bit of chili powder because we like it spicy. We're making a good Hooray! mess. Hooray! Whisking can also be a good way to sort of release anger as well. You know? We'll have children when we're ready, Deborah. Who is Deborah? She's my aunt. We're gonna take this and we're gonna make it into a ball. Like so. Look at that. Egg. And. Remember, it doesn't have to be a perfect sphere. It's our imperfections that make us perfect. If it starts to fall apart, just kind of like pack it back together. Turkey Packers. Turkey Packers, that was the name of my intramural frisbee team. Back in Denver, Colorado, the old Turkey Packers who gobble up the competition. But what I do is I take one of the balls and make it extra spicy. And then I give that to the person at the dinner that I like the least. Is it Deborah? In this case, it would be Deborah. We're looking at 375, but if it's a little bit hotter, that's okay too. And this takes about 10 minutes. Right, Andy? Yeah, 375 will take about 10 minutes, but you just gotta eyeball it. You gotta say, like, is this golden brown enough? This is the Debra, be careful with the Debra. And now we just eat them, right? I've got this weird French mustard that looks like it comes in a paint tube. We cook because it's fun. We cook because we're thankful that we can. And you enjoy the fruits of your labors, the turkey of our worky. Oh, it's really juicy. All right, this is the Debra ball. Usually we give it to Debra, but I don't ever want to see her again. Yeah. Hmm. This is the one that got a little kick to it. Try it. All right. That could be spicier. Yeah, it could even be spicier. That's why we don't give it to Debra, because it wasn't spicy enough to hurt her feelings. This Debra ball ended up being a real winner. You can find the recipe with the link below. Check it out. It's below it. If you make the turkey balls and you like them, let us know. And comment on what you think other foods that could hurt Debra's feelings are. And we'll make she them. hurts other people's feelings for the benefit of her own hollow self-esteem. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Look at that. And share a turkey ball with a friend. We did. We give you our thanks for watching. You went for it. All right, let's eat the rest of these. Okay, none for the crew.